sneak previews number 432 recorded June 3rd 1982 <laughs> Our next film is one of the year's most eagerly awaited pictures. It's E.T., the extraterrestrial. And good news, this one is worth the wait. If you love the ending of Close Encounters of the Third Kind with that touching scene of Richard Dreyfus and the friendly but sort of wistful outer space creature, then you should enjoy E.T., which expands the essence of that wonderful scene into the full story now of a little boy in a suburban town who befriends an ugly little outer space creature who was left behind when his spaceship took off. The little boy first spots the creature in the tool shed in his backyard, but when he tells his mother and brother and sister and their friends about what he's seen, they don't believe him. One tip, if you look very carefully at the end of this scene, you'll just be able to make out a couple of long fingers belonging to the creature. All right. Where's the pizza? Look, look, there's some out there. Oh, it's in the tool there, shed. Mom. It's throwing a ball at me. Oh, cool it. Know where ball it. Ball it. Nobody go out. Stop now! You guys stay right here! You stay here, Mom! We'll check it out! We'll get it! And put the on us! Yeah! Come back again, Ma. Okay, party's over. Everybody back inside. Yeah. Tyler, give me that knife. Oh, great. Nice one, Elliot. It was an accident. A pizza. Yeah. Accident. Who said you guys could order a pizza, huh? Uh, him. I, I, but, huh? In the house. You geek, oh, man. Well, Mom, it was real. Wait, I swear. Wait, wait, wait. Don't douchebag talk in my head. Well, that's the only scene with the creature that we could get from the film's distributor. I really don't like how they play hide-and-seek with these special effects and creatures. But pictures of this creature have been published in both Time and Newsweek magazines. And here is the Newsweek photo. The film's director, Steven Spielberg, has said that he made the eyes of this creature as sort of a cross between Carl Sandburg and Ernest Hemingway. I hope he didn't pick one <laughs> eye of each. But back to the movie. Once the little boy hides the creature in his bedroom and shares his secret with his brother and sister in a wonderful scene, the word begins to leak out that the kids may have the creature, which was spotted at the very beginning of the film by some local townspeople. So now the government begins spying on the kids' house, while the kids themselves are more concerned about the health of the little space creature that very much wants to go home. Oh, Elliot. He doesn't look too good anymore. Don't say that. We're fine. How, what's all this we stuff? You say we all the time now. Really, Elliot, I think he might be getting kind look, of sick. Look, he's fine, Mike. Okay, okay. Good kids, bad government. In a word, E.T. is charming, certain to delight young people. I think the secret of this film's success is that it supplies a quality that has been missing from most American movies of late, the emotion of love. 
A little boy's love for a creature is certainly not an original idea. It's not that much different from a boy and his dog, longtime movie staple. But this movie revives that idea, which has been trashed or ignored by most recent American movies. And so, as we cheer E.T. and get caught up in this wondrous relationship between the boy and the creature, what we're really cheering for is a return of love to Aww. the movies. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> E.T. the Extraterrestrial is very sweet and a timeless movie. This is the kind of movie that makes movie critics talk the way you were just talking. I talk the same way. It makes your heart beat a little faster. It brings a tear to your eye. When I saw this movie, I felt the way that I'm sure people felt when they saw Wizard of Oz for the first time. Mm -hmm. I felt as if I had been introduced to a magical movie, a movie that's going to last for years and years and years and be treasured by one generation after the next. It's a great film. Well, I, I just was uh, entranced by it. I'm also there sitting there as a critic and thinking, isn't it amazing that such a simple idea can work so well? Mm -hmm. And that's why I did my little analysis with what made this simple? Th I mean, you have to admit this is not a complicated story. Not exactly. You got the bad government agents, and I thought sort of ham-handedly yeah. they yeah. shoot them with key, you know, have, uh -huh. have keys on their belt and all uh -huh. this stuff. Mm -hmm. And even that scene there, it's not a very complicated thing. But boy, the power of that emotion carries. This and I'll whole tell movie. you, one of the reasons this movie works is because of special effects. Now you accuse me of being intimidated by special effects, which I think is totally unfair because in this film, what you have is a relationship between a person and special effects. It's magical. And, you know, in the last three or four years, one thing that's been missing in movies is, is love relationships. Okay. And here we have this creature that comes right out of a special effects workshop. It's human, in a sense. It's certainly sentient. We like it. We love it. The kid likes it. There's a relationship. Yeah. It's very moving. So uh, if the I'm intimidated by these special effects, I plead guilty. No, no. You, what you are uh, entranced with is the same thing I am, which is love. And the special effects, so what? Mm -hmm. It's love there. Okay, I'll say it. You're right. It's love. Finally, two big yes votes for E.T., the extraterrestrial, Steven Spielberg's enchanting fantasy about a friendship between a little boy and a creature from outer space. This is one of the best films of recent years. A wonderful entertainment for all ages. We recommend it with a lot of enthusiasm. Funding for sneak previews was provided by this station and by other public television stations.